Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're looking at a beautiful add-on known as Notescape. Notescape is made available by the folks at TrueVFX and they are the very same folks that got us the True Mass, True Earth, True Grass, True Space, True Terrain and also the True Rock. Now the beautiful thing for those who would like to make terrains and you want to make some pretty cool landscapes but then you want to do these things procedurally and you want these things baked directly into Blender right now you will be able to do all of this. So this can get you some pretty cool stuff from working directly with pre-built stuff that is existing within Notescape and also working with external features like maps, alphas and textures that you can throw into your scene. So without further ado we're going to dive directly into Blender and take a look at how this works. So with Blender simply open how you can get things started is by simply going over to edit, go over to preference and do your installation. Now once you press N on your keyboard you would notice you wouldn't find anything here because this is a node based add-on. So how do you get things started? Now how you can get things started is by simply dragging this all the way up, click on this button and you would notice that we have the nodescapes right there. Now click on the button right there and you would see that we have this gigantic canvas where we can do all of the things that we want. Now this is not an add-on that relies on a mesh so we're just going to select the cube which we have there and delete that. Now how do we get started? If we click on the big new button right here we would notice that we have the nodescape and for those who don't have this tab right here or you know if you don't have this panel you can press n on your keyboard within this space for you to be able to see it now once we do that you would also notice that we have some setting things we have the big execute button the debug button the use color button and also preset so let's take a while to appreciate the presets that exist as this would save you time and also help you create things faster contrary to building yours but of course we're going to talk about how you can get started and a couple of things you need to keep in mind when trying to build yours so if if you click on the preset button right now you click down here and hit the refresh preset you would notice that all the presets are right here so there are a couple of presets that you guys may want to take a look at for example if you like to create some cracks maybe you want to create the terrain that contains cracks you can do that by selecting the crack right here click on execute preset and that would automatically show right over here now this makes sense because at any point you want to offset this you want to you know increase the scale you can easily use this node to do these things and you can see how much stuff that you can create this is a little bit dense so i'm just going to drop the subdivision level to about 50 so we can get something happening really fast you can now move this back and forth depending on what you like and for those who like to also push this you know forward and backward you can also do that like so so pretty cool stuff you have going on there and for the most part if you also like to take a look at the crescent island you can select that and hit the execute button as well and see what you have so automatically the node is just simply creating a mesh for you so this is a this is a very beautiful thing it's a very cool thing to see that we have presets that can get you up to speed meanwhile you guys might be asking what about the use color what does this do now the use color that you see here would allow you to change the color of the ground and also the color of the rock for you to see these painted with the vertex color so if i click on create vertex color right now you wouldn't see anything in the viewport because we haven't set our viewport display or our viewport coloring to vertex so if i go over to the viewport you know shading and go over to coloring and set this to vertex you would now notice that we can see this so we can also choose to change the color as we want and we can also go towards a bit of blue just simply click there and that would automatically load that right there so depending on how you want to display colors within your viewport or to see certain parts in your terrain you can choose to use this so i'm just going to turn this one off because we would like to see some cool stuff so let's also go back and set this back to material now how do you create yours i mean if you would like to make yours what and what do you need to keep in mind and how do you actually work with it so there are a couple of things i would like you guys to know before we get into that for you to start making yours you need to click on the base so we're just going to start out with the base and then click on execute so we have this tiny plane right here which we can start working with now you can choose to subdivide this plane depending on how much subdivision level that you want and you can also choose to increase the length and the width of this so i'm just going to set this to four by four which looks good you know just set everything to four for four and get started with it and i'll click on this button and move right over here now some of the important notes that you need to keep in mind is like the noise so there are a couple of noises that you can play with which includes the veroni you'll see that they have the default blender turbulence marvel and also the fractal so you can select from any of this list and start working with them so for example if we select the marble and drop that right there you would notice that we have this going now you probably wouldn't be able to see anything within the viewport 
owing to the fact that for every single node which you add you'd need to hit on the execute button now i mean for the most part this is what i came to find out once we add in a brand new node in most of the cases you have to hit on the execute button to get this thing going so with the marble node here you can actually take advantage of this and start doing some cool stuff so you might also want to play with some stuff like this maybe you want to reduce that so maybe reduce this to 0.1 just to move it to that point or if we set this back to one you can choose to offset this too so you can offset this to a point like that offset this to a point like this and we can also choose to offset this so depending on what you would like to make you can offset this however you want so with this here you can also choose to play with the setting so and this is tied to the noise type that you're working with for example if we select the hetero terrain you would notice that the hetero terrain looks quite different and we can also play with the noise scale if this is what we want and we can also drop that noise scale down now speaking about playing with the noise scale there is also setting things for example with the hetero terrain that deals with the sea level so you can also play with the sea level which elevates the terrain all the way up and you can also choose to play with the noise detail depending on the number or the amount of detail you want to have when you're playing with the noise and this in itself is also tied to the subdivision level that you're working with so if i set this all the way to 100 and press the enter button you'll notice we have way more detail compared to when i just have this at 25. so with this done there are also some very cool nodes like the smooth steep which you have right here so i can throw in that smooth steep for example and we can click down here and change this to several stuff for example we can say we like this to become elastic and you can see all of those things that we are getting from here and you know like i said earlier depending on the subdivision that you have you can get some more details so we can have that like so and i can also choose to change this to a sign and i can also choose to change this to you know a bounce and all this stuff so depending on what you want this will come in handy so making terrains with a procedural node like this is super easy and you can also do some maths for example let's say you want to add something extra so let's say right here we would like to add some noise so let's go back and select the noise which we want and we can throw in this noise and just connect this over to this part and drag this all the way to a point like this if you want to preview this just link this to the displacement select this part and hit that and by default all you get is the cell so i can simply change this to any of the noise type that i would like to play with we can add the veroni and also hit on the execute just to get that happening you can see where the veroni is and right here we can start doing some math like maybe adding some multiplication we can also choose to do some other things which includes things like edge fading and so on and so forth so let's go ahead and add some multiplication all right so we can throw in that multiplication right there connect this one and we would like this to connect right over to a point like so connect this let's actually take this one out and do this so i'm just going to zoom right in there and we can choose to multiply i'm just going to put that there and we can multiply that hit on the execute button to see that executed so i can also crank this a little bit more so maybe we should actually bring this one down i guess this might be better so we can use the multiply to transform and i can also do the same thing right here drag this down and add that multiply so let's grab that multiply right over there as well connect this over to that and then we can connect this right here let's connect that right here select this hit the execute button so that we can preview what we have going on there and we can use this to you know also get this one going all the way up so the c level looks down i can also raise the c level i'm just going to set this with a keyboard instead so we can set this to 0.2 so let's position that 0.2 0.2 looks good go back to this point and you already know that we have this at this point okay and we have this one at this other point which is this right now okay so because we have these two at two different points we can now throw in a simple subtract node so i can bring in a subtraction and position this subtraction right here so I would like this subtraction to be there add this one over here and we can take this one off so with that done you would now notice that we're having a swell time playing with this so i'll select that hit the execute button have this executed and then we can choose to use this to change and play with some very cool stuff for those who like to do some clamping you can turn on that clamp and this is going to clamp right from that point 
and you can use this to do some very nice procedural looking things. So this comes in quite handy for most of the use cases and you might be wondering, all right, what about the fade? How do I fade this stuff? All right, for you to fade this, you can just simply type the word fade right here, connect the fade right over to the point like that and you can start fading these things by yourself. So the radius is very responsible for that so we can use the radius to do that fading and you can change this however you want. So we can also say we we'll like this to be changed from linear to ease and you can see that we can crank this all the way up and you can also choose to move this from one point to the other. So you can actually use this for some motion graphics depending on what you want and you can animate all of these things by yourself. The original idea for this is to create landscapes and it looks good for anyone who would like to also want them to be animated and anyone who would like to have some procedural stuff. So this is more like it. I'd like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Notescapes is here. Link to this is going to be in the description so you guys can do well to check these things out. So for those looking for procedural stuff, you're looking for ways to create landscape procedurally, this is something that you would definitely find interesting to work with. And of course, Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. If you like the video, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like these. Peace.